we can draw a board. Why Fine. only then? Because the board is the visualization of our yeah. workflow, yeah? So we Absolutely. need to know the workflow to visualize it. Designing a Kanban board that reflects complex workflows can be challenging. Can you walk us through the process you use to design Kanban boards for large scale Kanban implementations? So I can uh, first share my first mistake uh, because uh, when I was, uh, well, uh, firstly uh, approaching Kanban and introducing Kanban practices to the first team, uh, I actually made all the mistakes I could. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I did it uh, from day to day, like, you know, since tomorrow we will be doing Kanban. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I introduced uh, the board, I introduced everything, and I said, okay, now we are doing Kanban with Kanban metrics, with limits, let's go. Kanban with a capital K. Yeah, <laughs> and this is no uh, not how it should be done, uh, especially the Kanban with capital K, which is the Kanban method, right, which uh, should follow some specific steps mm. that I le later learned that they exist. It's even uh, funnier is that uh, I actually using trial and error approach yeah. decided that, well, first we need to talk about issues. We need to know what issues we would like to address with the Kanban practices. And when we list down the issues that we have inside the team or inside the product or project or whatever, then we can think, OK, so we have those issues. Which Kanban practices can help us address them? Yeah, OK. And if you ask this question at the very, very beginning, of course, you need to explain what Kanban practices are to the team, right, to the people involved. Uh, but when you do so even briefly, they will start thinking like what can help them resolve those issues from Kanban practices or from other tools. Like, actually, you don't need to narrow it down to Kanban, just, just improve. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, whenever those practices got chosen by people involved, uh, by the team members, um, there is much higher chance that they will actually do it. So, you know, whenever I come to the team and tell them, OK, since tomorrow you cannot have more than five uh, items in active development, will they listen? Well, I don't know. Maybe I can justify it a little better so that they can understand why I believe it will help them. But it's still not their idea, not their, uh, not something that they wanted to do. And here, when you are talking about the issues and letting the team decide which practices can help them, and they are actively thinking how to address those issues with Kanban practices, then they feel like, OK, I invented the solution. We should have no more than five items active in the same time. Awesome. <laughs> and so just just to like to use agile lingo, are we talking about WIP limit? Yes. 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 Work in progress limit. And um, and and so, yeah, I, I, I've got the same thing, right? I, I go into a board. And I look at it and I see this guy's got like eight or nine items that he's working on for, I, I can't even tell you how long it was. And I'm just thinking, why, why have you got all these things up? You know, it's like juggling balls. You're going to drop them. You're not going to, and, and nothing's being, being completed. So one of the things that I was saying was, okay, you've got eight things up. What are the most urgent ones? Let's do those two. Just, just, just leave the other ones. Put, set the other ones aside. Just work on those two. Get them done before you take the other ones on. And all of the sudden, he's like, "Yeah, you know, it's like magic, you know." And um, so, in terms, what about the, the the design of the Kanban mm -hmm. um, columns, if you like? Yeah. So mode? uh you're starting with those issues, right? You, when you start with issues, you have those practices chosen. That's nice. And then um, I'm using uh, the system thinking approach to uh, introducing Kanban, which is called static in short. Uh, and uh, static is something that is actually uh, developed by Kanban University. And you can learn how to do it on my classes. <laughs> uh, awesome. Of course, yeah. I. So are we going to get a link that I can put in the in the ch in the description for this video? Yeah. So that Thank you. It. Please do. There's so much more to learn on this topic, but yeah, continue, Eva. 
Yeah, so you can learn all about it and do exercises on your example, performing static with me on those classes. So yeah, feel free to join. And uh, basically it's uh, a set of steps that allows you to introduce uh, Kanban in the more humane way than I did at the first time. <laughs> <laughs> in a more humane way, okay, I love that. Yeah, and uh, actually it uh, focuses on understanding the system, understanding your workflow first, and designing the board to visualize this workflow as the last step. Like so that. you don't start with the board, you That's end with right. the board. That's right. Do you know what? And that's where where I find everybody going, you know, it, it, when when you're doing an agile transformation, they're literally given a board and a workflow and, and told that's what you've got to do rather than rather than can we just visualize how you actually already do stuff? Right. So you start building the step by step and the complexity of it starts to come out. And then at the end of that, that's when you should come up with something that actually is similar to what they're already doing. Yeah. And even if we think from the traditional uh, change management point of view, we also have those three steps, right? Like we have the current state and we have to defreeze it. Then we have the change that is happening. And then we have the new process that we have to freeze and give people those new um, ways of working and make them be used to it, <laughs> yeah. make them used to uh, work that way. And uh, even then you start with mapping the current situation to understand the current situation and then you introduce changes to optimize the process and introduce new process. Mm, Kanban approach with the evolutionary change is actually a little bit similar from this point of view that you start where you are now. It's only logical that you first need to understand your current situation to be able to improve it, right? So you start with understanding what is happening uh, around you what is happening, uh, happening inside the team, what mm. is happening around the entire workflow, what the workflow is end to end. Do you yeah. actually uh, work on the entire workflow inside your team or maybe your team is part of something bigger? And of yeah? course, that's the benefit. One of the benefits of that is you're, you'll start to see where the bottlenecks are, right? Exactly. Where you, where you need to focus on improving your process so that you remove these bottlenecks. Exactly. And what's more, uh, you need to also understand the demand that is coming. So what is requested? Who are your customers? What they expect? How fast you should react to their requests? Maybe mm -hmm. some customers require you to respond urgently. Maybe some customers uh, can be treated a little bit differently in the lower pace. Uh, how do you prioritize? How do you decide which stuff is important, which stuff is urgent, which stuff is not? How do you decide which uh, items or which tasks won't be done at all because we all need to remember that product management backlog management request management whatever we call it whatever we do mm. always includes also the ability to say no to like you know letting go of some of the work that comes to us so what are the criteria that we are using to decide about that yeah. only if we understand all of it and only if we understand the nature of our work the priorities so basically the classes of services, so different kinds of priorities so that we can observe them separately and then have measurements separately and then know about each type of service we provide, what is the time we need to complete it. Mm. And like only that. then we have the view on our situation and then we can draw a board. Why Thanks. only then? Because the board is the visualization of our yeah. workflow, yeah? So we Absolutely. need to know the workflow to visualize it. Okay, so can I ask you a, a couple of follow-up questions? Um, does that mean that you've got different teams with different workflows and different columns? Okay, you're nodding, you're saying yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. okay, and then and then how do you then, or do you even need to, um, for information or work items to move from one board to another? Other, other than the impediments, like if you've got a blocker, mm -hmm. you need to visualize it in another board because there's a different team looking at it, that sort of thing. Um, but is there is there a scenario where you might have a work item that lives on a board and then you've got other teams that are contributing towards it? 
Uh, well, yes, because that depends on the level we are looking at. Yeah, mm. When I told about the scaling on different perspectives, uh, we can scale also up yeah, on this level, higher level. And uh, when we are looking, for example, on this bigger parts, like the goals I, I was mentioning, yeah, then we have different scrum teams contributing to one goal. So they yeah. are all contributing to one item. And uh, well, we don't actually have in our setup a board that is uh, monitoring the progress of each goal. We have mm -hmm. other metrics for that. We don't have the board visualization for it. Uh, however, we are using the visualizations on the feature level from different teams so that we can see which bigger parts, bigger than basic items which are user stories and the, the teams are working on user stories right but we can see those bigger parts those bigger chunks uh the features uh when they will be completed by each team and a couple of features are creating a goal so right now we are not visualizing the progress of goals themselves but we are looking at the features and user story level so um I guess yeah. that will answer your you know, question. I, I have a hundred questions on that, but I'm going to try to stay cl clear on what we're trying to achieve in this because I, that is something else that, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to bring us back to to what we're doing here and what we're talking about. Can I ask you what tools, what software do you use to design your boards? Yeah, we are working uh, on the Microsoft stack. Uh, mm -hmm. We are using Azure DevOps. Uh, I use Power BI for most of the metrics. Yeah. Uh, we are also using the Azure dashboards. They are quite useful as well. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Azure DevOps, you can also link items between boards. Yeah, so you can see the predecessor or that something is waiting for something else. So this visibility is, of course, present in our boards and backlogs. Yeah. And when you're when you're thinking when you're gathering that information, when you're measure looking at the steps of your current team and how they like to work, and then so what are you using to do that? Is it like literally post its on the walls, or are you using like a, a collaboration pool to to look at the flow of the of the process, the current process? Yeah, Azure DevOps. Yeah, everything is in Azure DevOps. In Azure DevOps. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah, yeah. You. Okay, awesome. Um, I think we should move on to the next column, uh, to the next question. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. Um, okay, Kanban adoption and change management. The question is, shifting an organization to a new way of working can be very difficult. What strategies have you found most effective for promoting Kanban adoption? 